All right, thanks for staying with us. It's Crossfire with Dapo and Ishoma. We have uh, Barrister AZ Eluche uh, who just joined us in the studio and we'll be having a conversation on some of the stories that are out there. You know, every time we try to talk about Nigeria, it's always a very um, passionate time as, um, you know, what affects me in the South is, is a big concern to somebody who lives in the East and somebody who is in the North, actually, is, um, is also affected by some of the things that is happening to, um, you know, to the Westerner. So Nigeria is a big country and we try as much as possible to make sure peace reign in every uh, geopolitical zone or everywhere where you find yourself. Now, we, 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 we brought a couple of stories that we read out, um, you know, in the first uh, part of the show before we went on that break. I will quickly brief you on some of the stories that trended yesterday and many of them are, are still trending. Uh, the vice president reiterates federal government's commitment to release Chibo girls. Now, it's been uh, well over four years that the Chibo girls were abducted in, um, I mean, in their school. Um, it was, they were there for examinations. I mean, these girls have been away. Uh, yesterday, we didn't really, um, I mean, drill down into discussing the, the, the so many uh, logistics and um, so many activities of government to ensure that the remaining girls are back. But federal government is saying that we have not forgotten them and we're not resting on our horses to, um, you know, to, uh, on our oaths to probably bring back the girls. And so uh, we believe government and we hope that uh, things will actually be done very speedily. Also yesterday, we told you Army launches Operation Cockroach Smile um, 2 in Cross River State. And um, anyway, we have had a couple of them. Where the cockro I, I explained yesterday what it means for crocodiles to dance and what it means, I mean, to smile and for python to dance. And so the second batch of it or the second phase of it is already launching Cross River. And we hopefully think that people will respect what government is doing if really and truly this is a means of curbing um, militancy, kidnapping, ham robbery, cultism, and other form of illegality in the state and beyond. Okay, Ishama. Um, let's let's take the rest of the two stories. Uh, just just as a build up. Um, okay, you know, so let's that. start from the top. We took the story about the vice president. You know, he made he did mention that he authorized two venture loans from the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation while President Mohamed Buhari was away on medical leave. And you know, this having the timing of this statement, Nigerians are wondering and asking the timing of this statement, and also the issues you know surrounding Dr. Ibe Kachuku. And Mr. Baru, do you what's your opinion about it all? Do you think the vice president is trying to make some cover-ups to douse down detentions here? Well, um, viewers at home, thank you very much for having me in your rooms, in your program. Um, the reality is that this government's so-called efforts against corruption mm. has been a, an, a, a miserable failure, has been deceptive right from oh, the really? very onset. <laughs> now this whole noise being made about uh, the Chibok, about sorry about um, the NNPC mega contracts, is basically because a minister's letter was leaked. Otherwise, we would have still been in the blind about the billions of dollars which mm. went amiss. So the reality is that, and there's so much, so many other issues of corruption. The um, the weed gate, the former secretary of the federal uh, government, exactly. who spent millions of donor funds on clearing weeds. The millions of dollars that were seen in a apartment, in a, um, traceable to the former head of national security agency, so so much fraud has gone on on this, under this government's watch without even the slightest. But the the issue of yes. uh, I mean the the Dasuki Gate yes. is no business of this current administration. No, I'm, I'm, it, yeah, I agree. The Dasuki Gate. But what I'm saying is they came out with a mantra of war against corruption, and what we are seeing is that they are building a castle of corruption. What has happened in the NPC? Do you have proof to substantiate no, the, the proof that they are building a castle of corruption? Yes, the proof is the letter of the minister, the comments of the NNPC GMD, the comments of the vice president now. But I mean, you know, but you know investigations has also not been concluded but they to are, prove. They have been investigating the weed gates for decades, mm. for, for months. Mm. They have been investigating the, uh, the issue of the millions of dollars found in an apartment for several months, and nothing is coming out of it. So the reality is that we are, we are watching the manifestations of mega corruption unfolding on a daily basis by this government. And already, you see that there is a funny way of they, they address corruption. 
a senator, a serving senator who was an ex-police officer, accused the Inspector General of Police of right, exactly. gigantic corruption. And what did the government do? The Attorney General, the Office of the Attorney General went ahead to now sue the senator for very spurious reasons, without even addressing the issue of corruption which has been mentioned. So we, we have, I think Nigerians are getting fed up. We have realized that we were scammed by the whole noise about <laughs> corruption being made by the now, government. Now, uh, talk yes. about my, uh, uh, my house, um, accusation of the Inspector General of Police yes. on um, allegations of um, uh, misdemeanor, on allegations of corruption, and, and, and the likes of them. Yes. Now, the, the, the point here is that uh, Maizu himself, Senator, has not been able to substantiate his claims. Mm -hmm. You know, because, I mean, one of his allegations was that uh, the Inspector General of Police impregnated a young officer. And the family of the young girl came out to say, I mean, what, what's, what's, your t what's your business with our daughter? Uh, being, you, you don't even have an idea. Because no, we, I, don't, we didn't throw a, a, a public party or do a social, um, you know, for no, crying out I, loud, I, I, I don't think the that IGP, is, sorry, yes, yes. the IGP is an Hausa man. Yes. And, and, and really... He's Nupe, and not Hausa, he's Nupe. I mean, he's a Nupe. And he's a Northerner. Yeah. As it were, he could, maybe he's entitled to marry as many wives as he can, you know, and yeah. um, it will not be... But I, I, don't, I don't think Nigerians' concerns about what he's doing in his private lives, how many women he's pregnant or whatever. Yeah. The major thrust of the uh, Senator Missile's complaint was that billions of Naira has been collected by the police to give security to personnel, uh, to, to and individuals. And collect money from private Good. organizations. And, you, and when you say proof, we don't need proof for such. But that, mm -hmm. his Look, claim that, was that this is not, this didn't start when Ibrahim the, Idris became the Inspector General of no, Police. No, no, no. Yeah, he was in the force for about 10 years. Yes, agreed. Yeah. And what I was saying is that yeah. this is still corruption and it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. And we have a government that's fighting a war against corruption. And it's still allowing this corruption to be ongoing. If you go around, for instance, the oil companies, Mobile is not too far from here. It has several policemen lining on their gates, Nigerian uniform policemen, who, I'm forced they paid something for those policemen. Exactly. So the proof is very, very right there on the street. So when you now don't even investigate what the senator has alleged, and you rather go ahead and now try to prosecute the senator, it shows that this government is actually building a castle of corruption. Okay, mm. on building on, according to, you know, to you, building yes. on corruption. Building a castle of corruption. Let's quickly also take your thoughts <laughs> on yesterday's Don't, don't miss out the adjective. <laughs> yes. He wants the adjective. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> but we also, because yesterday we had such beautiful and robust discussions. And let's also take your thoughts. Now, yesterday, the Federal High Court in Lagos ordered the final for future of assets, which were linked to Dizzy and Alice and Good. five others. Good. And the total value of the property stands that's over three billion naira. Yeah. Now, final for about future. Thirty billion naira. About yeah. thirty billion naira. Yes. Good. So, as it stands now, all of this, based on the final for future, belongs to the federal government Good. of Nigeria. It belongs to the people of Nigeria. Good. And you still say the government of Nigeria is not doing as much to fight corruption. Yes. Isn't this now? Because we know also there are so many legal battles, legal lacunas here and there to get a final for future on it. So, don't you think the government also is trying its best? The, the government has done nothing towards fighting corruption. Now, let me buttress that. Before this government appointed uh, the current head of the EFCC, yeah. um, as a, to, to head the EFCC, the Lamude, Ibrahim Lamude, who was former head of the EFCC, was accused of One going away with of... over a trillion naira of recovered loot. And he, he just vanished into thin air. And this same government has not even raised an eye, has not even tried to go after this Ibrahim Lamude fellow. And they have allowed, he's still on the streets. When you say go after, so, no, what there I'm, is a legal I process. Agree. What, what, I agree what I'm to, is this. I agree no, to tell you on this. What I'm, what there I'm is a legal process. No, 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 so are you saying that you, the executive... Is he in court? No. What, are you saying Islam that this court? case no, is no, in court? Listen, no, no, no. What, so I'm, what I'm saying is... No, you no, have no, Mr. Ezeb. But we have people watching and listening. Are you saying that, are you pushing that the executive arm of government should probably subordinate the court process? Are you saying the executive arm of government should contravene the provision of the Constitution no. and interfere no, into no, no. the, the no. matters of the, the courts. The courts are doing their bit. So like why are you instance, saying they're not no, no. doing so Hold much? On. Because the as you're trying to talk about Ibrahim Lamadi here. No, no, no. Here. The forfeiture order against um, Desiani Madweke is yeah. the court mm -hmm. acting. Exactly. Now, we're talking of the executive. What have they done to bring to reality or to bring to fruition their so-called war on corruption? 
They could have moved against Ibrahim Lamrude, mm -hmm. but they did nothing. And the man is walking on the streets. But he has a case in court. He, what, he has no case in and court. We That's understand. The issue. And we no, understand. Has, now, 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 I have a question for both of you. I have a question for both of you. He has a case in court. Yes. But you would not say because there are so many adjournments, yes. so many appeals here and there, you would not blame that on the executive. Now, let, we are, we are, we are in, we are in public. That is a business for the judiciary. This, this is a public forum. Yes. Ibrahim Lamrude has no case against him filed by this government. Simple. I have not heard one. There has been a series of cases. I don't know. No, 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 no the issue is okay. none. No case and against then I have a question for both of you. Yes. I have a question for both of you. Yes. I mean, I am educated. You are learned colleagues. We are well, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now. Now, the point is, I am beginning to wonder yes. why the court system or the judiciary um, are failing to, to, to sensitize some of us who are not in the legal business. I am. Of, I think. I mean, this is my thought. Yes. That when somebody is caught, and you have affirmed that he actually stole this tablet, that is an evidence to go ahead and convince someone. Not I, entirely. I, I said that this thing has been traced to someone, and we said, "Oh, this thing doesn't belong to you. It belongs to Mr. A, yeah. and you stole it." And the person came out to say, okay, uh, as a matter of fact, it wasn't particularly because I stole if, if the case is that I'm not sure I stole it, and they want to investigate to know the intention behind taking something that doesn't belong to you, mm -hmm. it, it's a different thing. But this had been traced. Monies that are not meant for you were, were found in your account. Yes. Mm -hmm. What is he doing that? We know your salary. And we know that in one year, your, your, your doctor's salary should be 3 million naira. And we, we get to find out that you have 300 million naira. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't need any other evidence to, come, well, to take you, you to do. court. You so do. why, why no, is no, the court will, system? No, I mean, no, he let, let, Let's burst no, it. Uh, yeah. you, you are very right. It is a system. <laughs> I mean, the system needs to be restructured. We have a system whereby even the judges are complicit mm -hmm. in some instances okay. in, the, for, in corruption. So they keep on go, rigmaroling, going round and round and round, using technicalities, which are also available elsewhere. But you see instances where courts move ahead and make decisions. But because of the system we have in Nigeria, which we've always advocated that needs to be restructured. I, I put to both of yes, you then yes. that the yes. problem Gentlemen. in this country no, we, we, today you, yes. you is judgment. the judiciary. No, 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 you no, see, because that, if we have problem. judgment <laughs> and if no, no, we have judgment... No, no, no. You, you are taking see, it a bit too far. No, no. no. Do you but know why? Do you know, I can substantiate that, that, be, that be, statement. That please. Before yeah, you okay. pass final judgment on the judiciary, understand that this is a system systematic issue. And the beauty of law is the fact that you see monies in my account does not entirely mean it is mine. Number one, there are times where oh. monies have been transferred and the investigations have proven that those monies did not even be belong to them. There are cases those monies are channels for laundering and then before you know the money even leaves the account. So that enter and the fact that somebody said, okay, yes, I admit I took the money does not also mean they actually took the money because they could have given the answer no. in a state of duress. These are the issues. I don't think so. I'm talking about the process. The institution of the court. The agency of government, to move. government that are responsible to for, I mean that are responsible to help the executive fight the, the anti-graft war are instituted and empowered to carry out investigation, mm -hmm. not just to allege, investigate and bring evidences that mm -hmm. this person is a criminal, would you say and then you will you use these evidences in court to no, say this Would you say the anti-graft and Barista, is it, would no. you say the anti-graft agencies have done so much in terms of investigation? You see, to respond to the question of who's at fault, the Nigerian constitution hmm. has empowered the president with so much powers mm -hmm. that he becomes like the Nigeria, he becomes Nigeria. So the judiciary, the legislators look at the executive, particularly the personality of the president, and then watch how he, re how he behaves. If he exudes propriety, I um, mean, in integrity, the system will fall in place. But when a situation like we have now, when he's not even leading by example, mm -hmm. he tells us don't go for med foreign medical trips, and he spends 100 days in the UK. And he's, you see corruption all around him. His secretary of the government is corrupt. The, his, uh, everybody around him it seems to be the corrupt. Where does legislative come in then, here? Checks and balances. No, no, Where not, does the legislative no, no, no. What, come what in now, here listen to what I said. with policies he to He has so much power that everything this. tends to flow as he is. Not entirely. So that's why even the, no, 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 the judiciary it. and the legislative team tend to they behave are lawmakers more and like they don't what the president They don't does. come into if the they, activities. The major business of the executive has no 
inclination toward the towards what the yeah, uh, no. uh, towards no, what no, no, the but, but, but they do the legislative because of government is no, doing. No, no, we are saying that the legislative can bring out laws. Putting a ban on foreign uh, um, no, the, government personnel. Do you know why they can't bring out laws? Why can't they? Because when, they are guilty. When a senator, so, so when at a, the end of the day, we a, shouldn't blame this no, no, no. president. When a you. senator wants to act as a senator should act, mm. the AG, the Attorney General of uh, the Federation, sues him. When a when a Would judge no hold on when a judge wants to be when a judge wants to be proactive, yeah. his house gets surrounded by security personnel. Mm. Now what I'm trying to say is this. We have the legislative and executive, but the presidency is so powerful in this country that it can mess up any system. Okay. And so far, that's what we have seen. And it's, even when it's, when the Senate president tries to be proactive, you see that there will be all manner of schisms against him, perpetrated by the executive. So we have a system that is defective, that falls in tune with the antics of the presidency. So we have to restructure this so-called fraudulent document we call a constitution, mm -hmm. so that we can have a true federalism. What we have for now is we have an, anybody who occupies the presidency makes Nigeria revolve and reflect around him. And until we correct that, we we'll continue to uh, we we'll continue to be in this quagmire we find okay, ourselves. Okay, maybe we should take one more story, one last <laughs> yes. story from yesterday. No, we didn't talk about this, but that's the issue about the federal government making an announcement, you know, which is going to you know come out very soon to enforce a ban for medical doctors working in private hospitals to engage in private practice. Do you see this physical working out? <laughs> another you. sham. Another sim simple another sham. What has, he, what has the executive got to do with the Nigerian doctors? A president who travels out for medical treatment. Virtually any senior medical of any senior um, officer in the ministries mm. travels abroad for medical treatment. So what is their real concern about Nigerian medical doctors? Have they, they, you don't pay them the good salaries. You don't even give them the equipment to work. You don't, I, I had a surgery not too long ago, and it was pathetic because I had to go through a public health uh, system. It was pathetic because they, they have no, 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 no equipment. You, you, you put over three billion naira worth of um, funds in the Astorok clinic, yet there are no syringes in the clinic, mm. and you have the temerity, you have the guts to tell doctors what to do and what not to do. They should think of something better to do. I mean, you remove the log in your own eyes first before thinking of somebody else, else's. Right, the the yeah. government has no business telling any professionals what to do, what not to do, until they themselves who are in government. Particularly the executive. Why keep on particularly on the executive, like I've said? The government, the system is twirls around the personality of the president. If you have a president who, for slight ear infection, for slight headache, goes to London, goes to Germany for treatment, then he has no, no, he has no iota of integrity or uh, of, of fulcrum of, um, of uh, a position to speak on the okay, medical let's, uh, let's be anyway. let's be balanced on this, yes, we'll this be before we go on, okay. on this break. Now, I understand also your position. Yes. A lot of Nigerians also sympathize with your position. Good. But at the end of the day, if we have doctors stay back who you know, do not diversify between public practice and private practice, this will be for the good of Nigerians, knowing fully well that the political class do not also patronize our medical institutions. So many times people have had to die, people have had to seek alternative you know, African treatments because they went to hospitals I, I think the dimension and there was no doctor it, on ground. The dimension to it for me, yes. which, and I think it is in, it's in order, mm -hmm. is that government is talking about doctors on the payroll of the federal government. Exactly. That's one. Good. Number two, there is a civil service law mm -hmm. exactly. that does not allow you to do any other business mm -hmm. if you are in government employment, mm -hmm. aside from farming. Good. So if you do private practice, mm -hmm. if you are a doctor, you can only be a farmer, not Great. like going into private practice. Mm -hmm. And so government has a very good reason exactly. to mm -hmm. come up with this, not because they want to fight the doctors back because of the strike and all of that, yes. but they're just trying to say, see, we have been linear for too long, mm -hmm. but it's high time for us to actually uh, enforce, you know, what is binding on you as our staff. Exactly. Well, you see, we have to be realistic. We don't just talk about the laws in, in the, as if it's a prison in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. We have to be realistic. When you have SSAs or even SAs to the president who, who own Porsche mansions, who drive in luxurious cars, and you have consultants, um, medical, medical do consultants, doctors, yeah. who are not even able to pay their student school fees, and you have the guts to tell them what to do and what not to do, I mean, you're not being serious. How can Nigeria grow? Nigeria if can we grow. Do not, how can Nigeria yes. grow if yes. we do not keep and obey 
the laws. Good. The civil servants' rules are there, yes. which everybody should obey. Good. Irrespective of the fact that the political class has failed and they Good. have not complied, Good. does that mean that others, the rest of us, ordinary Nigerians, should flout the law? The fish, when the, when the head of the fish is rotten, everything rots. But then, I mean, we have to have that. But then change uh, begins yeah, with yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, change, yeah, change, change, on the case change, of, of, of the office of the change, president. Change uh, no, begins no, with us. Uh, uh, it, once it begins, look, Nigerians are very mm. amenable people. You can rule Nigerians very easily. Once they perceive that the man at the top is doing right, they'll fall in line. Let me give you a good example. When Mr. President himself was military head of state, Nigerians perceived that he was upright. Yes. And that system was working. Why so, against him? This good. everybody Every, allies. People kill him. everywhere. Yeah. We kill him. Yes. Because they had the perception that the man at the top, then the same president, was upright, and they were upright. But now that we see that the man at the top goes abroad for treatment, he has, he's surrounded by corrupt entities, it's the looting and stealing is legendary, and you're telling Nigerians to be docile? Come on. All right. Anyway, um, <laughs> it, it, it gets hot, you know, just discussing about Nigeria. We're going to go on a short break. When we come back, we have more stories to have a conversation on. Do, do stay with us and join us again. All right, welcome back, and thanks for staying with us. It's still Crossfire with Dapo and Ishama. My name is Dapo Banjo, and we have Barista Eze Eloche in the studio, and we, we're just having a conversation. Now, uh, Barista, a quick one. 5.5 yes. 5 billion naira loan um, has been requested by the president mm. to be signed to finance the 2017 uh, Appropriation Act. Now... Obviously, I mean, government is not that they have money in there. I mean, saved up somewhere uh, before coming up with a, I mean, with a, a budget for, for a particular year. Now, um, seriously speaking, budgets need to be financed, and government probably know the best way to go about it. Now, um, yesterday I raised this issue on the show, and it was debunked. I am of the opinion that we have money stacked up in, I mean, not particularly uh, belonging to government directly, uh, because Tanzania's money is, is still outstanding. A lot of all the money is here and there that government is recovering. The NIS money is still hanging in there. And so many other monies government have tracked and they've traced to some certain um, uh, um, personnel or institution that have gone through the process of, you know, corruption and all of that. And I'm beginning to feel that how come government is not largesing on some of these monies that have been recovered and then leave the issue of loans aside. But the truth is just that the Appropriation Act needs to be funded and government wants to borrow money. And people, I mean, the opposition party are beginning to uh, put politics into it, saying, no, you're going to throw us into more debt if you borrow money. So how do we move forward? Since government is even interested in financing and, and, and supposedly they want to make investment in infrastructure. I mean, it's easy to walk to anywhere and try and borrow some money. I mean, but that's the weakest part. That's the weakest link. That's the weakest thing you can do. Because when you are borrowing money and your pocket is leaking, Mm. You've not even bothered to plug the loopholes. We are even sure that from up to the five point something billion, whatever that has been borrowed, over four, ninety percent of it will disappear into thin air. Mm. And that has been the story of this regime, of this government. You have and not previous other uh, yeah, and of, of course previous other government. So there has been really no change. You've mm. not blocked holes, and you are borrowing more money. We should actually be asking ourselves: these banks that give Nigeria this kind of uh, all these loans, is it is it reasonable? What are those banks getting in return? for these fictitious loans that they keep on churning out to Nigeria. Because you wouldn't give loan to a company or to a, an individual that you know is not prudent. When you, you say fictitious, you mean non-existent loans? Some of them are actually non-existent. Some of them are, I mean, what happens in some cases is these loans get signed, we are going to go you, give you a billion naira, and then what actually comes to Nigeria is not even up to a million. So, I mean, okay. so you, you see okay. that it's, it's fictitious, and it, all it now it piles so up. So per adventure, if you borrow, yes. 5.5 billion uh, yes. do, uh, US dollars, yes. and um, you are supposed to pay back seven, uh, seven point something, you know, billion naira eventually if, yes. you, if you are paying back. Yes. And you are saying, you know what? Give us the money, take your profit, mm -hmm. you know, ahead so, of time, so and send the balance to us. Good. So that we can eat. Exactly. Yes, and we can share. I mean, that's what's going on. And because you, at the end of the day, you won't even see the projects that are supposed to be implemented with these loans. And you don't borrow money to pay for your recurrent expenditures. You are borrowing to pay salaries. 
it's something that an individual should not do. So you are wondering why but is the But the Minister government... of Finance, Kemi Adeosu, came out really yeah. very strong about a month ago. To do what? To say that federal government will no longer borrow money to pay salaries. But they're still borrowing money to pay salaries. That's the reality. They are still borrowing money and not just paying salaries. Maybe via, uh, maybe, 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 maybe via the, 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 What is so maybe funny about, they are borrowing what is, money what is so funny about this government is this. Yeah. They announced, for instance, that they have gotten 34,000 ghost workers removed from the system. You now wonder, 34,000 ghost workers have been removed from the system. No, and this amount of money has been No uh, single saved. person gets prosecuted for that scam. Mm, mm, I mean, you, the whole mm. thing is a, it's a huge charade. It's a scam that's And going it's on. not that we have like... Uh, 24,000 people I mean, no, in one in one when, in one cell or across Nigeria in, in various cells that yes. you were a product of corruption and you know that you are not qualified for yes. this office yes. and you were brought into the system yes. and you have defrauded the government for 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 five years or ten years no, and no, you will pay back no single such procedure. I agree with you totally all you, all you have so is what happened to ghost workers good I mean so you see that what we have is Somebody, every one or one or day, one day or the other, another minister will come out and reel out some kind of wonderful stories for us to tell, to clap for them that they're fighting corruption. And in reality, corruption is growing in leaps and bounds under this regime. It's unfortunate. Hmm. It's unfor but the, the reality is that it's telling on all of us. It's telling on the Nigerians. You take a drive on any Nigerian street, and the faces you see standing by the roadside are scary. You see people who are like, let, let me just have an opportunity to have a grab on this man. People are getting annoyed in this country. Mm. And if we're not careful, it will blow up in our faces very soon. Wow. I mean, I, I, I'm beginning to really get uh, worried, especially uh, considering the, the position that you have taken on this matter. As, I mean, we just spoke about ghost workers. Yes. So, I mean, you met somebody in a system that is not supposed to be there. Yes. And eventually you tracked it that this person actually came into the system because of a corrupt practice. Good. What happens to those individuals? Somebody obviously <laughs> puts their names in the in the um, in the payroll. Now, in the payroll. And was collecting the salaries. Yes. And you removed 34,000 ghost workers and not a single soul is being prosecuted for, for that. All that all, oh, all, all it oh tells man. you is this. Yeah. What it tells you is that the so-called minister who made that announcement has her own plans to replace Ghost worker A to 34,000 with her own, ghost worker B to 34,000 to continue to collect that don't salary. You think that, don't you think that's a false statement? It is not a false statement because, because if, if, because if you, if you no, showed no, no, me no, who no, you were prosecuting, then I'll keep quiet. You, you just said, some, you just said something yes. that the minister per, has plans. Do you yes. have any evidence to show that any minister No, he's just using his Christian mind. He's just using his Christian mind to think that this is The evidence is this. You, <laughs> nature abhors a vacuum. Mm. So when you remove 34,000 ghost workers from a system... Do you have any, and, any document, no, any no, no, proof I'm to coming. substantiate and that? And you don't have a reduction in the of, overall federal... Uh, there has no, been. they actually said they have money. Yes, they okay, have And they're been. still getting loans to pay these uh, uh, bills? Excuse Come me, sir. On. Okay, the loans, the uh, loans are also made to finance Look, the capital the, project. The, you see, Do what, you agree that Nigeria has a capital project deficit? Of course, do you I mean, uh, every, country so every country does. I mean, a, every country does. Our Nigeria. case is yeah. allowed. Yes. Yes. But the fact is that we're not even making any effort to address the issue. But yeah. Well, no, no. Well, as we're, much we're, as yes, as it is right now, the government's major income is there no, generator new that this government has actually oil. done in terms and, of infrastructure. Well, agriculture is stepping up. Mm -hmm. So it's, it may take a little while. We have seen previous administrations borrow money. Ishama. Yes. They Ishama. Have, no, there has been some. I have a question for this you. This administration. Yes. I have a question for ha you. They have two more years, yes. technically. Two well, more years. Well, okay. For Nigeria to examine them. Mm -hmm. so yeah, okay. Shouldn't we also give them to That's them? That's where I presume. You, you know what somebody said? Because because wait, as it is, yes, as you, know, it is, you know what somebody uh, said? Yes. Somebody said that if every capital project or every infrastructure that this government intends to build mm -hmm. were to be categorized or seen in form of seed, then each and every one of them will germinate before 2019. Yes. Are we saying that this government is, they are growing roads right now? Mm -hmm. Well. Are they growing that, houses? That's what she's saying. Uh, yeah, I'm asking Ishama, are she's they saying. growing houses? And you see, because if you say they have two years, uh, we want to see what infrastructure we that have. They, no, we have one for the Nigerian character. roads no, are in a, in look, a very appalling we, state. We you have, just traveled and you came back. We have one for the character in no, the state. No. You know what it's telling us? You, 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 you traveled by road. road. I did. I did and you to just came state. And it's fantastic. And look, I know, yeah, no, I, I did say, look, I did say that the roads are not in fantastic conditions. Okay, government has planted. We planted some roads. Sorry, please. With a little bit of some exceptions where we saw that, okay, some 
palliatives were being done to make yeah. the road smoother in, I think, within the Ogun axis, on the towards Ogun axis. Well. I'm sure if you did ply the road, you would have mm -hmm. said. But aside that, the roads are terrible. Not just the federal roads, but even the state roads. Talking about in Delta State, it's unbelievable. Now, the issue here Delta is, State is awesome, right? Not fantastic. Oh, okay. I bet to say. We, we, have not a, fantastic. we have a funny character but, in the state. But the issue is... telling us that jobs, 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 roads, roads, roads. And the whole thing is a scam. No, but the issues here. No, uh, I mean, no. It's a scam. Do you know why? <laughs> why? I know that go <laughs> Governor Rodas Okorocha <laughs> is made 304 emo people, emo youth. Those checks did not clear. Years. Those checks never clear. Uh, are you, do you know a beneficiary? I know several of them. But, I mean, we have scorn artists in governance in this country recently. Oh, my. I mean, I'm, I'm saying that unequivocally and on, on national television. In Imo State, we have a con artist who is there. Now, gentlemen, yes. neither, neither of us work in the technical, <laughs> that's in the engineering service. It's not technical. You give no, somebody a check and Neither of play. us <laughs> work in the engineering service. Maybe the account is yet to be funded. Oh, that, that is understandable. <laughs> yeah. The account is yet to be funded. Yes. But you have a written check, a signed but check. Say, we, are, if, we are laughing over a very serious issue. Mr. Mr. Really is not funny. Yeah. It's Mr. Not funny. Is because it? this Let's country is being on one thing. pushed to the How long does it take? Him, how yeah. long does it take to complete a road network? In terms of having to clear, in terms of having to do all the um, take look, the look, That must study. be new roads. What how are you look, clearing? Look, look, but isn't that part look, of the issue? Ishima, look, the, the issue is not this. just not just maintaining you, the You want to one. clear no, the issue. Is, how long does it look, take? Can I clarify this issue? How long it's does it take to how dredge long, a river? How, long, let, let, how long does it take? It don't, it's not a matter of how long it takes to build roads. or do, It is just sincerity of purpose. Okay. If those in leadership come out and we see them as being sincere mm. and open up the books to Nigerians and let us know what is really going on and not that we have to wait for leaks from the Minister of Petroleum to know that $25 billion went on the ground. And then to be, if just sincere people will clear these issues. But the vibe I'm but getting from the both of you, the vibe I'm getting from the both of you is that the minute the you no know, bud, budget is made, yes. we should just start seeing the roads everywhere. No, no, no. It, it's because so far we've been seeing that the moment a, a loan is um, secured, the money vanishes. So we it are just worried. Disappears. It disappears to thin air. Mm. So no, we are just maybe, maybe, yes. maybe people are correct <laughs> to say that yes. everything they are doing mm -hmm. is in a seed form. In they the are sowing it. Okay. The roads is it are, a are already... Seed or... yeah, no, the <laughs> roads are already planted. They will grow. The houses, you know, because Nigeria today yes. have 17 million housing deficit. Good. And uh, obviously, I'm not, uh, I'm not seeing anything in that light because the Minister for uh, Works um, um, and Housing is busy about, you know, how we can power Nigeria. He wants to power Nigeria. Yes. And so housing... Is, is really suffering at the expense the, of all the things The minister things that is busy doing nothing. Because if you go to the power sector, it's I'm a failure. I'm not going to take that. Go to the housing. I'm not going to no, take no, listen, Do you know why? Go to the housing sector. Okay. I don't know about you, okay. but where I was, I traveled to the east. We were on running on generator for almost the whole, 20, for the whole period of my stay there. Mm -hmm. So on the area of power, it's almost a failure. Housing, failure. Roads, mm -hmm. failure. So what are we talking about? Oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. I am glad you mentioned yes, what power. are we talking about? So I mean, the, the reality is this. Let this government be transparent and open to Nigerians. Let us understand what really is going on. And stop all this crap talk about fighting corruption, war against corruption. If, you, if, if, if you have the right, yes. uh, Barrister, yes. to do something very drastic, yes. I mean, maybe a very draconian measure, yes. what would you do to help this government survive? Good. What I will do is to actually restructure the country. I mean, what I mean restructure yeah. is to let Nigerians understand what a Nigerian is. Be a Nigerian anywhere you are. Okay. And once you have Nigerians thinking in that way, then you now know that people will commit to the country. But for now, what you have is everybody's like trying to uh, keep to himself and then stealing for themselves. Mm. The essence of being a Nigerian is missing in the whole um, equation. And that is the problem we're having. Every, there's nothing like in, everybody's like grabbing for keeping in anticipation that somehow, somehow the policy, the policy will not last too long. But if you reinforce that there's going to be a Nigeria, Ooh. everybody's part of this um, project, okay. and that involves inclusiveness, that involves transparency, you will realize that things will begin to change. Ooh. But for now, it's to your tents, O Israel. Okay, now, yes. another question I want to ask you, mm. and I keep wondering. Yes. If you, if you are in the United States, Good. or you are in the United Kingdom, mm -hmm. and you ask somebody a question, mm -hmm. um, where are you from? And yes. the person say, I'm British. Yes. Or I'm an American. Good. Even though they may be, they may they may have migrated. Yeah. yeah. But since they have citizenship, yes. that is where they when, see themselves. Good, good. But when you ask a, you, I mean, when you ask a Nigerian, yes, 
I am going to first of all tell you, I am from Elisha. Yes. I'm a Yoruba man. Yes. And the moment, because of where I am from, you know Good. I'm a Yoruba man. I am from here. I am from there. Yes. Why don't we see Nigeria first? Now, How did we get here? You see, I mean, it's follow back to what I just said. Yeah. About promoting Nigerianness. Now, when you have a president, for instance, the current president, Mohamed Buhari, And this was his plan. Who is, no, this no, was part of his no, plan. For instance, I heard something like no, this during it, the campaign no, in it, 2015. It's just been revealed that he asked the World Bank to focus on the North. So I read that on the now, social now, media. It's not social media. No, it's not, I mean, we, is that I mean, substantiated? It's, it's, it's really? very much substantiated. It's a quote. So when you have such mannerisms on social media, no, no, not on social media. Have on we, has media. it been on? No, has it been on mainstream media? Well, I'm not media. sure they will deny and that. The fact that it's a mainstream media no, is not mean, genuine. Good. Now what I'm trying to say is this: you have a president who has had that kind of mannerisms. Mm -hmm. He's trying to project north of myself, extending the rail line from uh, no, Kano. No, can you be Sorry. fair? Extending the rail line from Kano to Daura, which has little or no economic impact because he wants his own village or his own town to look good. So that kind of mannerism, irrespective of what he says, people are looking at what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And what he's doing is, for me, not Nigeria, for myself. The president doesn't have a northern agenda. I'm, well, I'm not saying he has a northern agenda. But what yeah. I'm saying is he has I, not extended... I, I don't want to believe that, I'm too. Not say, look, I'm, but we know that we yes. have a war-ravaged region in the north. A war-ravaged region? Yes. That's why. I thought Number you were talking two, about the East when you said war-ravaged region. Because the Southeast has been war-ravaged and nothing has been done. In recent times. No, no. In recent times. I mean, times. it has I mean, been war-ravaged since 1960. That has been since 1970. Good. It's I mean, since 1970, there's been a build-up over time. And previous administrations you know, never did anything about and, that. And all of that. What I'm even saying is that we have a major insurgency in the North, in the, in, especially in the Northeast of Nigeria. Good. And to a very large extent, there have been submissions to saying, let us rebuild the Northeast. Good. Yeah. Now, Everybody agreed that Boko Haram and their activities mm -hmm. has really throw um, the, the, the northeast, you know, eastern part of Nigeria mm -hmm. into a, a, a very major desert. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, houses are no more there. Farmlands have been destroyed. Good. People don't have a place to stay. Yes. They have been in the IDP camp yes. and they cannot even go home. Good. Now, I remember that the past administration, without having to show anything that have a similitude to a northern agenda, mm -hmm. because it's a south southerner. Mm -hmm. He was still making a lot of investment in the north. Yes. They built schools. They right. were trying to build roads. They were right. trying to raise infrastructure. Build that schools, means but there's they did a not major deficit. Quick. Yes. That means there's a sure. major problem in the in, in the northeast. Yes, yes. So without really being um um a, a ethnical, Good. Uh, you know, or sounding like yeah. you you are from one geopolitical Good. zone, don't you think now, that we should be fair to saying that there's a major problem there and government wants to do something good? Good. You see, if you had if you like promote Nigerianness, there wouldn't be a problem. But when you, despite where you are coming from, maybe if you lived in Maiduguri for 30, 40 years, you raise all your children there, and they still have to fill a form mm -hmm. where, state of origin, they put somewhere in Akwaibo, there's still a problem when resources are devoted to that particular region. So until you promote Nigerianness, until you promote the need to, I mean, I mean to you restore Nigeria to promote who is a Nigerian, mm -hmm. Whatever you do will still be viewed from where it benefits. Mr. So, Eze, there yes. has been a lot of arguments now on the state of origin. You talked about that. People have been clamoring and saying, okay, to build one Nigerian nation. Remove it from all documents state to be of filled. Origin and let, let us it be put, citizenship. Either your citizenship you or yes. your state of residency. Good. So your state of residency should be should take preeminence as your state of origin. Certainly. Now, who should, who do else do you think can enforce this other than the legislative? No, it's have not, we seen it, any no, bill? It's, it's not even legislative. It, it should I be think the driver should be the executive. The driver should be the executive. No, in the constitution. I disagree. Well, I disagree. We have a major the national representation agency sits with. They don't no, no, no. sit with the legislative. This it, is a it's legislative a government because agency. It has to be factual no, in the constitution. It has a, to become no, a legally binding no, no, document. No, no. It's already a constitution. It's just administrative matters. Because in the Nigerian constitution, once you are resident in any place for 12 months, it. you can contest election in that state. Yeah, but it does Good. not spell it to say that your state of residence. Residency should take preeminence. State of origin should be scrapped. It has to be stated there. Well, the fact is that it's still administrative. Mm -hmm. Forms get printed by the executive. So if those, if the in, in place of state of origin, you now put state of residence, it changes the equation. But even there will still be the but likelihood that people look at the names. It will now, only change now, now, for the this thing. administration. Yes. But for a long term, mm. people will still go back to the old norm until it is clearly stated in the constitution. Now, do, what do you have to say, Barrister? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is coming from my mind. Yes. What do you have to say about the quota system? Do you think it has helped in any way? Definitely not. 
Oh, really? Because uh, certainly not. Because it only stigmatizes the people. Hmm. Because I have, I have been opportune, I served in Kaduna, for instance, I have been opportune to meet very intelligent people from all parts of Nigeria. Yeah. Where you come from does not affect your intellect. Mm. But then your environment, if you, are, if you are told you are disadvantaged educationally, you tend to behave disadvantagedly in a disadvantaged manner. If you are told your brain is not working well, your brain will not work well. But if you are encouraged that, look, you are smart, you keep on excelling. Mm. I mean, it's simple as that. Then you, you, can't, you can't tell me that a young a Fulani young man who alone can head 100 cows. And none will be found missing. Found missing. It's even, not, it's, even, that is not intelligent. Yeah. But then you tell me that he's, he has an educational advantage. Who told you? Give a young Ibo boy three cars to, um, to, to, to lead. He will, mess, he will mess up the whole place. So the reality is this. Yeah. Everybody is intelligent. But if you now Very tag true. some states, mm. educational disadvantage, and then allow them to pass, allow them a, a two, two over 100 pass mark, while others have a 50 over 100 pass mark, then you're making those who have lower pass marks look stupid. And look inferior. And I doubt if they will be able to compete very favorably. Good. You know, I mean, being it, it, given a fair, I mean, the, a, a the, level. The, the irony is this. We, uh, recently, we had a young boy, a young cadet from the NDLA, from the, uh, from the NDA, Nigerian Defense Academy, who, like, made A's in all his, um, all his subjects. And guess what? He's full and he's from Sokoto State. Hmm. There are people from all over the country in the NDA. But you have a young man who's from Sokoto. But that's his, his state is tagged educational disadvantage. Does that mean that somebody from Sokoto is at education disadvantage? Hmm. Okay. Certainly not. So that, that education system has like served to tie the north down and only frustrate the southerners hmm. because it has not even helped the north in any way. Those who are still intelligent get to be where they should get. To. And then you now have dunces who, who should not ordinarily be in the, in the academia being forced into the academy because they scored two over 100. Yeah, because so of the quota the, system. Good. The earlier we remove such crap from the system, the more we are, and you see, it still relates back to being a Nigerian. Mm. If you say a Nigerian is somebody who, once you, a Nigerian scores 50 over 100, yes. he gets into this university. Simple. Now you struggle and get 50 over 100. And not say, once a Nigerian from Imo State scores 90, and then a Nigerian from Sokoto scores 10. They are on the same level. Mm. Good. Then you now begin that dichotomy, and once you begin it, it lasts and continues to... It kills the system. Good. That is the reality. Now, I mean, because of time, yeah. we have to start, I mean, to just take your, um, your, your last thought on, on, you know, on, on, some, of the, on some of the things. Now, um, the, the government has taken a position, uh, and the position is to move this country forward. Uh, like I asked you, what exactly do you think government should do if you yeah. have the powers to change to change anything. Put yourself and in the place of the president yes. for and the next few minutes. Yes. So far, what the government has done has been to move Nigeria backwards. Before now, Nigerians were beginning to think as one. But now every Nigerian is thinking of not just his ethnicity, but also his village. Mm. So the con this particular government has moved us decades backwards. We are more, we are more divided than we were. Than we were two years ago. And if you were president, and what would you do if I was If I was president, I would tell Nigerians, look, you, wherever you are as a Nigerian, be a Nigerian. Mm -hmm. And even change the law so that you don't have to be saying state of origin. You now put state of residence. Once you've been anywhere for 12 months, you are entitled to whatever benefits of that area. And it's, should, that, that mm -hmm. kind of a mantra or that kind of law should be spread around. Awesome. Once you have that on board, Nigeria will have the way to live up to it. Awesome. Yes. All right. Nigeria is a beautiful country. I have no other place to go. East, west, north and south. Home is still the best. Yep. Nigeria, go survive. To enjoy more of this, our Ogun get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.